Hello everyone. Welcome to our first ever mindfulness and yoga session. And what are we going to do? Well, we are going to read a story, do some stretches and a couple of exercises. And in the end, we will embark an imaginary journey going in a hot air balloon today. Well, let's talk about what we need. So I have a mat, but a mat or blanket will do something that is not slippy and you can do it in a bedroom or in a sitting room. You can do it in a garden, wherever you like. I have a pillow to get nice and cozy in the end. I have a blanket and Patch is doing it with me so we can have a little cuddle in the end. Okay, well, let's begin. We are going to start by reading this story called Fergal is Fuming. It's about a very sweet little dragon who was very lovely, but when he got cross, he got a little bit fiery. Because guess what? He couldn't control his breath and he couldn't keep his cool. Do you know what? I sometimes feel like that. Now we all at home, all together, sometimes people make me cross in my house. They don't put their toys away or they don't put their glasses away. And I must say, I sometimes get a little bit fiery too. So I need to remember this little trick Fergal's mummy is going to teach us in the book. Well, let's begin. This is Fergal. What a lovely chap. He is a friendly little fella. But when someone tells him what to do, Fergal gets very very, very angry. What do dragons do when they get very angry? Well, I seem to remember they take a deep breath <gasps> and blow fire out. Like when his dad said to him, Fergal, come and eat your tea. But Fergal wanted to carry on playing. And then he said, Fergal had to eat all his vegetables if he wanted pudding. Oh, Fergal felt very fiery. It's not fair. <gasps> I don't want to eat my greens. So Fergal didn't get any pudding and he didn't get any tea either. Oh no. That's not good, Fergal. Fergal got in a pickle on a football pitch. Well, you in a goal today. Oh no, look at that face. He is not happy, is he? Let's have a look. It's not fair, said Fergal. I don't want to be in a <gasps> goal. Oh no, the goal is burning down. Oh dear, Fergal. His fiery temper got Fergal into trouble all over town. You have to wait for them to cool, Fergal. <gasps> you have to miss a turn, Fergal. <gasps> oh no, everything's burning. Fergal, wherever he went, Fergal just couldn't keep his cool. Finally, his friends had had enough. Oh no, what do you think happened? I think some of his friends stopped playing with, with him. I think they were a little bit scared. Everyone, everyone's ignoring me, mummy, said Fergal. It's not fair. Well, Fergal, dinner is in the bin, Bear's buns are burned, and no one can play football. And that's not fair, explained mummy. We all get fiery. But we find a way to cool down. My trick is to count to ten. Oh, do you know what? I might try it too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Shouldn't be so difficult. The next day, Fergal felt fiery again. That's not... Oh, but he remembered his mummy's trick. One, two, three, four, 
five. And guess what? He didn't feel so fiery after all. It had worked. Brilliant. Fergal noticed loads of animals had their own way to cool down. When Crow felt fiery, he told his friends about it. He just went around and told everyone about what was going on. When Fox fell fiery, he watched the sunset. Oh, what a pleasant sight. Wolf always found a nice quiet spot and made a big noise oh, at the moon. Cat lay back and had a really good stretch. And then there was her. He just kept whizzing about, stopped feeling fiery in the first place. Now Fergal had lots of ways to cool down and when he didn't waste his fire on being angry and fiery, he found there were much more interesting things to do with it. Like powering the hot air balloon we will do in the end of our session. Bye Fergal. So what do you think? Do you sometimes feel a little bit cross or frustrated or sad when you just feel you want to stamp your feet and maybe go do something you shouldn't? Well, maybe next time it's a good idea. You stop, you listen, and then suddenly you start counting. You can maybe even close your eyes and imagine something lovely. I am going to imagine I am on the beach it's nice and warm. Okay, let me, let me see if it works. I close my eyes and I start counting very quietly. You can even count, count silently in your head. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh yes! I definitely heard the sea and I felt the lovely warm sand underneath my feet. But that's enough talking now. Let's kneel on our exercise mat and curl up into a tiny little ball. Let's pretend that we are a seed that's been planted in the ground. There you go. One two, what can you hear? Can you hear your heart beating? Or can you hear the birds outside? Everyone will hear something different. But because we are a seed and we want to grow, we need to stretch and make sure we scoop up as much nutrients as possible so we can eventually grow into a tall, strong plant. But so far, we are resting under the ground, getting ready to grow. There you go. Let's sit up, stretch your neck, one knee up, two knees up, bend them a little because you need to get through the soil. So three, two, one, whoosh! And again, you need lots of power. Three, two, one, whoosh! Maybe one more time. Three, two, one, jump! Yay! Now you became really strong and you can stretch towards the sky. There you go. Try to stand as straight as possible. Oh, and it's a little bit windy. So let's sway left to right left to right that's it and now your leaves are stretching out and splitting in two and you becoming a beautiful strong flower and you can turn towards the sun from side to side and maybe just like the dandelion you saw in a science lesson today you can spread the seeds around to make sure your garden gets filled with all the dandelions and becomes 
nice and yellow. That's it. Now you can bend over and shake all the tension out. Shake all the sillies and sway from side to side. That's it. And maybe give it a stretch. Can you touch your toes? And now you strong again, nice and straight. That's it, and maybe you can even show me your best tree pose. Try if you can balance on one leg and put your hands in the middle of the chest and stand very still, just like a tree. Ooh, let's do this again. Okay, let's back on your knees. Curl up into tiny ball. That's it. Just like the seed on the ground. And be very still. What can you hear? Are there any noises around? What can you hear? And then scoop up all the nutrients and all the water and fill your seed with all the goodness because you need to grow really strong and tall. That's it. And very soon you're going to feel that you want to come out and start growing. So sit up upright. One leg two legs and jump three two one whoosh really push through that ground three two one whoosh there you go and now you're able to grow really tall really tall through the soil and you can stretch and you can sway side to side in the wind because you are now a very, very strong plant that's growing. And before you know it, you split your leaves and you turn into a beautiful flower. Now stretch to the sides and maybe give it a turn so you can see the sun. That's it, turn. And now you can start spreading some seeds around, just like the dandelions do with the papas. All the little parachutes flying around your garden. One more time. That's it. Keep stretching. Very good. Now let's give it a shake a little bit. Bend over, shake your arms and shake your hands. Maybe you can even touch your toes if you like. And you can see your back stretching beautifully. Fantastic. Now let's see if you can do that tree pose. Put your hands in the middle of your chest. One leg up. But if it's too much, it doesn't matter. You can put your leg down and stand on both feet. And you can pretend that your legs are very, very strong roots. Did you like the strongest tree in your garden? Well, well done for doing the lovely exercises. Do you feel a little bit more stretchy and relaxed? I do a little bit, even though I must admit I need to do a little bit more practicing and really work on my stretches because I do feel a little bit stiff. But well done you. But now we're going to bring our attention to our breath. So just like Virgil's mummy said, sometimes pausing and starting to count in your head instead of going all fumy and fiery is so much better for us as well for everyone else. But how do we do it? How do we kind of take a deep relaxing breath? How do we breathe? I mean, breathing is one thing that, we, that never ever stops. You breathe through the night, you breathe through the day. Now, you can put your hands on your belly. There you go, on your tummy. And you can see if you can take a deep breath in a way that your tummy would feel like a big balloon being blown up. Okay, shall we give it a go? One, two, three.
Well, if your hands are moving, you're definitely blowing up the balloon inside your tummy. We can pretend that it's a balloon. Okay, let's, let's start again. One, two, three, take a deep breath. Make sure you don't pop. So next time when someone makes you upset or cross, you can just take a deep breath in. Fill up your tummy and then let it go. And again, take a breath in and let it go. And in just a few moments like that, magic might happen. So your friends in the playground might suddenly decide they don't want to play with that bike after all. And they will say, here you go. Or maybe one of your friends will say, well, actually, I don't want to be, I don't want to play football. I'd rather go in a goal, so you go. Or maybe you might actually decide that if you want to grow really strong and big, it's a good idea to eat all your vegetables at tea time. So the breathing, the, the, the calming breath is there so our brain can think. Well, I think you did such a lovely listening and such a lovely exercising that I think it's a time for a cuddle. I might even have a little cat coming to cuddle. Casper, are you coming for a cuddle? Do you know what? Sometimes when I can have a, give my cat a stroke, that makes me very calm too. Well, anyway, it's time to lie down on your pillow. There you go, Patrick already is ready. Snuggle up. I have a blanket for him where I tuck him in. There you go. Patch, are you nice and comfortable? You can close your eyes and all you need to do now is to listen. Allow me to take you on a very, very special journey. You don't need anything, just a place where you feel safe. You might be at home or at your grandparents' house, but you know that wherever you are, you have people who love you and keep you safe. You can close your eyes or you can leave them open. This is your special time and it is up to you. Okay, are you ready? Today. We are going to travel in a hot air balloon and we will use our magic calming breath to power it. Send it up, up, up towards the sky. But before we begin, let's make sure we pack a picnic with us. You can pack anything you like. Maybe you pack some juicy strawberries or a sweet melon, or maybe a couple of sandwiches. You can also take anyone you like with you. Remember, the hot air balloon is magic and it can fit as many people in as you like. All you need to remember is to breathe. One breath in and out. The lovely calming breath. One in and out. That's it. There you go. You are feeling very calm and rested. It's so good to feel comfy as you snuggle down with your toy and your magic breath is starting to power up your hot air balloon that it's starting to float towards the sky. What colour is it? Blue? Green? Pink? Or purple? It might even 
be all rainbow colours. It's up to you. It is your balloon and no one, no one can take it away. The balloon is going higher and higher and higher. Wow! Maybe you can see a top of your house, the park and the roads around your house. What else can you see in the sky? I can see birds flying around and beautiful butterflies. Oh wow, I just saw a fairy and wow, there is a pterodactyl swooshing past. I just touched his wing and he smiled. One of the butterflies perched on my picnic basket and I shared the strawberries with him. Then he sat on my finger and as he flew away, sparkly dust rolled off his wings and made my hot air balloon even more special. When I looked down, I saw Mummy and Baby Bear climbing up the mountain. They turned to me, they looked at my balloon and gave me a wave with their soft, cuddly paws. And then I noticed horses and unicorns playing together in the fields, drawing rainbows in the air. I saw all my favourite things because I wanted to see them. They are all in my memory and I know that any time I like, I can turn on my magic breath and power my hot air balloon which will take me anywhere, anywhere I like. To all of my favourite places. I know the next time I feel sad or cross or angry, I can turn on my magic breath, which will help me think and make me feel calm and rested. You can now Ask your balloon to land you gently back where you started. Climb out of the basket. And if you like, you can go and tell your grown-up about your magic journey. Tell them about who you met and where you went. You may even want to draw a picture of your magic hood air balloon. I hope you enjoyed my special hood air balloon story and I see you next week. Bye!